Welcome to our Thank channel, ladies uh, and gentlemen. I hope that this video finds you well, Madam President. Are. Ladies and gentlemen, something of the is European happening Parliament. in Kenya ladies and gentlemen, that is going to, I am to leave, leave honor to an stand economic dent today in and this Kenya chamber. Will suffer as a Your result of Ruto's to address policies. This assembly is symbolizing power, the unity Africa and welcome him of Europe as is a, a privilege of fresh I hold air. in high regard. Wherever he went, he I was given standing ovation. Thanks they used to, all to listen you, to him. The distinguished because representatives they thought William Ruto meant what he said. Million citizens across but today, it is only the West states. that are left to give William Ruto standing President, ovation. I am because in Africa, for your they Just have realized that William Ruto is never the honest. Of you remember when, and when the firebrand politician Julius Malema came to Kenya, he this was saying, institution I don't understand Ruto. Role in he speaks from both sides of the mouth, telling us that they want to do away with the dollar, telling us that they want to do away with the West. Yet, including Kenya. he is boycotting my sincere gratitude summits like the Russia African Summit, in the yet he's welcoming of the all the arrogant Western leaders in Kenya. The European Union now, in Kenya. East Africa, this is a major Ruto leap forward in our trade and economic came relationship. In and it was welcomed by, the EU by remains all the East African heads of state. And in fact, you remember that even before for more than the last year's uh, presidential election, exports. William Ruto was a darling I of the Uganda President the impact of this agreement But today, far beyond that relationship trade has statistics. gone sour. They no it longer reach from the same page. It started not when William Ruto decided to but also ideas to cancel a, a, a milk deal where Uganda was exporting milk to Kenya. And, and William Ruto associated that milk continents. with the Uhuru family. And because he was fighting that family, he decided to cancel that deal, not knowing that by doing that, many Ugandans were rendered jobless. Museveni tried to complain, but it fell on dead ears. Then recently, you realize that Museveni was complaining that he was importing oil from Kenya and he met a lot of middlemen imposing taxes and he complained that this was untenable. He left the oil, the, 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 the Kenyan oil market. Now, yesterday, we woke up to headlines of uh, four other countries trying to follow Uganda suits and they are saying they want to ditch the Kenyan oil deal. This is Rwanda, Burundi, Congo, and, and, and South Sudan. The question that many are asking, why do you think the, the, the East African countries are ditching Kenya? Because there seems to be more than meet the eye. It is not just oil deal. It started with, with Museveni, it is escalating. I want us to look at why it is very easy for, for example, for um, Seveni to persuade other East African countries to ditch the Kenyan market because it seems that William Ruto has rattled most of these African nations and most of the East African presidents. Kindly subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell. You can also like and share our videos. And to all our supporters, allow me to thank you in a very special way, ladies and gentlemen. When William Ruto ascended to power, he started, he started behaving like a form one student who wants to impose himself as a head boy in a, in a high school. He was behaving as a first year student who wants to impose himself as a student leader. Instead of settling down to understand how the region works, William Ruto started by, you know, trying to impose himself. He wants to... to create peace when, when there was a controversy between South Sudan and, 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 and uh, the main Sudan. He wanted to impose himself as, a, as a, an arbiter. One of the sides rejected him. When there was a coup in West Africa, William Ruto was there warning, you know, those who engaged in the coup. Instead of going slow to understand what is the problem that is creating conflict, why do we have several coups? Because that is the only way you can understand a region and so when you go to create peace you understand both sides and many african countries looked at him and they said this man is not the right person his dalliance with the western countries made him think that he was above other countries william ruto decided to sign a trade deal excluding the other east african countries 
apparently east africa was dealing with the european union as a team so that they they they, they conduct their trades using the same tariffs tariffs are taxes imposed on goods and services that have been imported from another country if for example we import flowers today from another country maybe from tanzania we may decide that we're imposing five percent tax so that it becomes a little bit uh, more expensive than the other local manufactured goods so east africa all along had been dealing as a team so that whenever they have a, a, a trade summit with the U, with the european union they, they they all the other trade ministers from the other european from the other east african countries would come together and we sign a deal as a team but when william ruto got to power he decided to make a paradigm shift and he signed a trade deal with the european union locking out all the other east african countries Are you signing this agreement with Kenya? We also commit that we will work with our East African partner states. We will work with the 28 African states that are members of the tripartite free trade agreement so that we can bring them on board uh, this uh, agreement subsequently. And hopefully we can also take this all the way to the Africa continental free trade area so that we can build a bigger market, build a bigger consensus, and be able to do more with the populations that exist between Europe and Africa. NS exports to the EU will be tariff-free from the day one after its entry into force. Uh, this means full and unhindered access to the EU market, this creates strong incentives for trade and for EU companies to invest in Kenya. Uh, indeed, this agreement provides wider incentives for increasing foreign direct investment. It is also accompanied by the trade-related development cooperation. The goal here is to support job creation and sustainable economic growth with a particular focus on micro, small and medium-sized enterprises. He's doing the same with the United Kingdom. You remember, United Kingdom moved away from the European Union during the Brexit. And so they decided to look for uh, new trade deals with the countries. Now, instead of William Ruto conducting trade summits that involve the East Africa, other East African countries, he decided to go it alone, conducting trades, conducting trade meetings, and he wants Kenya to sign a deal as an individual locking out all the other countries. So this rattled the other East African counterparts, because they didn't understand why William Ruto now wants to move away from their norm of working as a team. And soon, US and the, and, and the other European countries does not, do not want Kenya to unite with the other countries because people like Museveni had started talking about the unity of East Africa. And if that is something that the West does not want, is unity. And so they are using William Ruto to separate because the Western countries have always managed to use the divide and rule. When Africa is divided, they cannot negotiate as a team. And so they become weaker when they are separated. It is like they decided that because you want to show us that you can do it alone, we also want to abandon you to see whether you can do it alone. So we are going to lose a lot of money as a result of this. Number two, the Kenyan government is very arrogant when it comes to dealing with the uh, with the neighbors. When Yoweri Museveni complained about the middlemen in the oil market and he had stated that he wanted to abandon or ditch this deal, instead of the uh, Kenyan government rushing to hold a meeting to find out what is happening or try to quell tempers, the chief economic advisor, David Diaman, who is being followed internationally, because whatever he says car carries a lot of weight, went on Twitter and started talking very arrogantly. This is what David D. said when, uh, when, uh, they, when Museveni complained. David D. took to his Twitter handle and said, how will the oil get to Uganda? Will they fly it in? Look at that. 
when Museveni was complaining and people were telling, asking D because they've been engaging on Twitter, that now that Uganda has shown that they want to move out from the oil, oil the Kenyan oil market, how will Kenya take this or what are you doing? Instead of giving a proper solution, he behaved as if Kenya is the only transit that without Kenya, Uganda cannot survive. And you see, the, 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 the Ugandan government was reading all this. What did they do next? They decided to engage their government and they voted against Uganda's dependence, over dependence on the Kenyan market. And Museveni has moved to Tanzania. So when David D. thought that without Kenya, Uganda cannot survive, Look at what has happened now. And when you speak like that, the other landlocked countries are, are, are looking at what you are saying and they, 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 they feel okay because you are very arrogant. Now we are going to teach you a lesson. When you are doing business, even the smallest businesses like Wewe ni Mama Mboga, Unakata Mboga Pale, you need to deal with your clients with a lot of courtesy. You need to be courteous. Mutu anaza kuja pale apate umemruka wa waloko meacha pesa hapo umemruka. You need to talk to them nicely. But the kind of arrogance that uh, the Kenyan government is displaying really rattled the neighboring countries. And that's why they are moving away. You cannot be answering your neighboring countries when, when they raise complaints such as this. You don't need to talk to them like this. You don't even go to Twitter. You can make a direct call. You can pay a courtesy call. So this is the reason why they, they are leaving Kenya. Number three is corruption. You see, it is corruption that has led to all this. There are individuals who are, uh, like Riley was saying, that they have decided to increase uh, at least 30 shillings per liter to go to people's pockets. While they are doing this, this burden is escalated to the other countries that wants to deal with us. And so they decided if it is corruption that is doing, the, doing this, they are moving away. And corruption has become a thorn in the flesh to the Kenyan government. They are busy trying to defend it, yet like pregnancy, it is coming out, they cannot hide it. So, so corruption has become a major stumbling block to the Kenyan progress. Socially, economically, politically, Kenya will not move forward because it is like there is a policy in this government that it is our time to eat. Courtesy of corruption, Kenya is going to lose billions of shillings while individual pockets are going to budge with a lot of money. The last one is taxes. You all know that the major reason why the, 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 the basic commodities have risen up and the reason why even our oil is, 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 is going up, the, the prices, is because of the Finance Bill 20, 20, 2023. When that bill was passed in Parliament, IPRA immediately moved in and they raised taxes. The cost of production has gone up. Many investors are leaving Kenya. They are flying out. Unemployment rate is going up. The environment for doing business is not really good enough. And even the local businessmen are crying out. People have closed shops. And this is one of the reasons why the East African countries are moving out because they cannot deal with a country that has imposed taxes on every commodity. So they are going. And you all know that it goes without saying that all this is happening because the IMF and, and, and the World Bank have decided to give us conditions to raise taxes so that our products become more expensive. So Kenyans are suffering because of the policies of the Kenya Kwanzaa, the Kenya Kwanzaa regime. So investors are going out, are flying, they are, they, are, they are leaving the Kenyan market. The, our neighbors are also leaving this market of Nigeria, were people who really thought that William Ruto's presidency would be good for them. But now they are making a U-turn. They realize that this man is very dishonest. He is a liar. People are going to suffer under this regime. And I want you to picture, this is just one year into office, ladies and gentlemen, and we are at this state. How will it go in the next four years? Where, 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 where will Kenya be? Your gaze is as good as mine.